Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming to uh, hear my, uh, my talk. It's a little bit challenging given the previous presentations that I'm following, but I will do my best to uh, say something of uh, interest. So my name is Paul Merton, and I'm going to be talking about fine wine, a fine goal-based investment. So the premise for my talk is a uh, paper that was actually uh, a presentation was given, I believe, here in 2013 by Dimson et al. Uh, they took over 100 years of Bordeaux data uh, from purchase prices and then of their uh, uh, results from auctions, and they calculated out that the real financial return was 4.1%, that's net of storage and insurance costs, over the same period between 1900 and 2012. Uh, UK equities uh, had a return of 5.2% and 1.5% real for the returns on bonds. Again, this is all for a UK investor. That point will become uh, a little bit more evident later on. So it, fine wine has been considered a good financial investment, or that's the way it has been uh, suggested. The paper, as I said, just said the return of 4.1% was uh, pretty reasonable, although it was uh, below uh, UK equities. So uh, my way of view, my, uh, my question that I'd like to pose is, what if we look at fine wine investing from a different lens, if we consider it in terms of a goal-based approach? So, if we say, uh, take three different, invest in, three different uh, investors uh, who would, have, would like to have three different outcomes for, uh, for their wine investment, their goal will be uh, each a little bit different. The first one is a pure financial investor. Their goal is to maximize their financial returns, focusing on, the, on earning the highest expected uh, return for a given risk exposure, so whatever the highest Sharpe ratio would be. A second investor would be the Epicurean investor. Their goal is to have a specific bottle of wine. So if they go out to buy a bottle of wine, they want to buy that one and that one only, and their goal is to consume it and drink it. It is not for sale. Uh, the third type of investor that uh, I'm be looking at is a hybrid, a combination of both a Epicurean investor and a financial investor. So perhaps some of the wine will be for consumption and some of it will be for hopefully for financial gain. So first we're going to be looking at the UK financial investor. So as I said, the goal of the financial investor is to receive the highest sharp ratio possible. It does not necessarily matter what it is that they're looking at. What is the, what is the highest sharp ratio? And based upon the data set that, I, uh, uh, that was collected from the paper that I'm basing this, this talk on, uh, fine wine had a sharp ratio of 0.21, and the UK equities for the same period had a sharp ratio of 0 0.30. However, the goal is not uh, bottles of wine. The investor wants to have money, pounds specifically, in their pocket. So what does that mean? They're going to have to sell these bottles of wine at the end of the period, so that 4.1% real return is actually not really 4.1% when realized after uh, selling the investment at an auction. Uh, they quote a uh, transaction cost of 15% for both uh, Sotheby's and Christie's in London for uh, each completed transaction. So what is the real financial return for investing in the fine wine? Well, what ends up happening is after that is sold, we find that after the first year you've lost the rate of return of 9.5%. And even if you went out for 20 years, because of that final transaction cost, your return would end up only being 3.3% versus a 4.1%. That's quite a hit. So that brings us to our second investor, the Epicurean investor, whose goal is to simply enjoy and enjoy the wine. So the Epicurean investor who invests in the wine that they want has just bought a risk-free asset. So what does that mean? Everything else in the universe that is not a risk-free asset is therefore risky. So if I have a risk-free asset, do I particularly, does it matter if other people value it more or less than I do? 
No, because it's my risk-free asset. I've always wanted this bottle of wine, and I will, it's the one I want, and that's what I will keep. The hybrid investor. The hybrid investor, as I said, is both looking perhaps for financial gain and also for wanting the bottles to consume. So there's really not much of a difference between uh, the portion of uh, the wines that are bought for financial investment. They still will have to sell these bottles of wine to uh, end up, in this case, again, in the pound sterling, and they will have to pay that 15% on the wines that they bought that they wanted to and will be consuming. Well, that was also a risk-free investment. Uh, they will never incur that 15% transaction fee. I put this slide in um, because I, I was telling somebody, uh, Florine, about, uh, about my talk and she asked me about wine funds. Well, there seems to be a lot of wine funds out there. What, what about them? Are they a, a good idea, a bad idea? Well, she doesn't seem to like this idea. So this is the managing director of Chateau Engines, and uh, she just uh, acquired uh, full ownership of the company from her father. So the quote is, you can't block that from happening, but you can try to control where the wine gets sold. I want to do everything I can to discourage speculation and I'm trying to prevent our wines from ending up in investment funds. It's important that our wines are opened and enjoyed rather than traded. Above all, wine is about pleasure. I could not agree with her more. Absolutely. Excuse me. She's an artist and a craftsperson. And I think that whether it's wine or any other type of art. We all have to make a living. We all do have to survive. That is the world that we live in. Sorry, could you explain to Kennedy the investment factors and what we're supposed to be saying about the investment factors? Okay. This is like Warren Buffett saying, I don't want to derivatives because they need money and have derivatives all over the name of the board. She still doesn't want the wines on the wine fund, and I would agree with her. I mean, if you if you would like to put money in or somebody, excuse me. Uh, so instead of a wine fund, uh, you could do wine pooling, where uh, groups of people can get together and leverage their uh, their specific uh, expertise and have economies of scale for purchases. This would not be a company, this would be just more of like a group purchase, a group of friends to do this. A buy and hold strategy with uh, no selling. Because for each sale, no matter what, that would incur too high of a transaction cost. Because of this would be minimal expenses and fees. And we should always be careful that in this case, we do not want diversification. Because even if I'm buying, if somebody's buying wines for me that say that they are good or enjoyable, if I don't like them, it doesn't matter. I will, I'm going to have to sell them and then again incur that transaction cost. In conclusion, the three investor types that I've described all have three different goals. The outcomes of those goals are are different even though the investment are, it's all identical. So what is a wonderful wine for one person could be less desirable for somebody else. Fine wine is a poor investment for purely financial investors as it relates to other possible assets that could be invested in. For an Epicurean investor, if that's what they want, that is, it does not get any better than that. And for those investors who want to consume and to invest for financial gain, the aspect, the portion of it that uh, will be for financial return, financial gain, will be less, uh, less desirable than if they had invested in a, another asset, uh, such as equities.